All right, and we're finally back for another painting tutorial, and today we're doing the Knight Draconis, the new Dragon Rider Stormcast guy. Uh, but yeah, it's been a while. I've had the uh, last couple weeks of school, taking finals, doing all that fun college stuff, but uh, we're back. I actually do have one more final coming up still, but... I've got enough downtime again that we can start working on this guy. So, I just wanted to pop in and do the intro. I don't actually know what color I'm going to do the dragon yet. So, I'm actually going to go figure that out. And then we'll come back and we'll do the first color. Alright, so we're back. And I've decided what color the dragon is going to be. And that's going to be a thermatic blue. And I did a test just to make sure this was the color I wanted. So, there's that arm painted in this color. And I think it's going to work out pretty well. So, I'm just going to go through and paint all the sections with this color. Um, like I've talked about before, especially with this guy, because he's got such big surfaces, we want to do the thing of painting to the edge, or painting to a crease. So we're just going to paint one little bit at a time. We're going to do this bit completely. And then we'll go to another. If we stop in the middle, we'll, uh, we'll get lines where our color overlaps. And we don't want that. So we're going to completely paint an area. Make sure it's nice and smooth how we want it. And then move on to the next. So we'll go to the next section here. And these dragon wings are perfect for this strategy because they're already divided into sections for us. We don't have to think about where we need to stop. I'm going to go ahead and do the next one here. And this, uh, this dragon really lends itself to contrast paint. It's got all these nice scale patterns and little skin lines, skin markings and all that. So, it'll be good. Not quite sure if we're going to use this same color on the bottom of the wings here, but we're going to put it here. And then if we paint over it, we paint over it. But, like I've said many times before, at least if we color it now and we decide we don't want to change it later, then we're done. We just don't put any more color on it. But if we leave it like the primer, then we have to come back to it later no matter what. So this way we either don't really make any more work for ourselves because painting this one little, these bottom of the wings here is trivial, or we save ourselves time at the end. So I'm just going to finish this guy up just by, or finish this color up rather, getting it all over the skin and the scales. And like I just said, I'm going to put it on everything. Um, and then if we come back and repaint some bits, then we come back and repaint some bits. But at least we'll have it done if we want to. Um, and. The last thing I'll say before I go finish this color is there's... I just have some tape around the flying stand here. Uh, that's just to prevent any paint or, like, when we're flicking the brush around, like, I think there's already some dots, yeah, like, right here. That would be on our flying stand now. We don't want that. We want our flying stand to be nice and neat. So that's what the tape is for, and that'll stay on until we're completely done painting. And I put that on before I primed, obviously. Um, some people will do their flying stands in black, and so that wouldn't matter. You could just paint it black at the end. But I prefer mine to be clear. So that's why we're doing it. So yeah, I'm going to finish up the skin here. Uh, I might put a second coat on, depending on how light it all is at the end and how much I think I'm going to darken it down later with like null oil and stuff. All right, so we're back, and our Aethermatic Blue is all dry. We decided to not do a second coat. This is just the one. 
We may go back in the future and do a second one, but for now, we're just going to do that. So now we're going to move on to Echelian Green, and we're going to do this on the fur or hair or whatever that's on him. He's just got it here on his uh, legs and then around his face here. One thing I will note, uh, if you're using contrast paint on this guy and not using a holder like I should be, watch when you swing him. His tail and his wings will both try to catch the contrast paint and knock it over. So, I almost knocked over the Aethermatic Blue in the first step. So, uh, yeah, just be aware of that if you're doing this. You should just put your paint in a paint holder, and I should as well, but I'm lazy, and I don't. And there's no good reason. I just should have it in the paint holder. So yeah, I'm just uh, just making sure to get just the fur, not any of the skin at the base of the fur. So just going very carefully along the line here. Making sure it's nice and filled in. And then do that with the rest. So it's on these four arms of his, or two arms and two legs. I don't know how dragons classify their limbs and then around his face so as soon as I do this I'll get around his face so you can see so that looks like it might be more complicated than these arm bits all right so he's got some here that's like his whiskers or something, but then he's also got some underneath. Is this part of it? I'm going to paint this like that's part of it for now, and I may come back and change it. He's got this here. This is just about being careful and just getting the paint where you want it on here. parts here and then we'll do the other side which I assume is basically the same but yeah I'll uh I'll get all that hair done on him the other two legs and the other side of his face and then we'll come back and do the next step all right and we're back with our fur or hair or whatever it is all done so now we're gonna go on to the leather we're gonna use snake bite leather for this I know the uh the most basic of leather colors, but I really like it, so I'm gonna keep using it. And so this is the straps connecting his armor to him, as well as the saddle. Get it a little thicker on here, there we go. And I'm using a smaller brush, because I really don't want to get this on the scales. I really want to just keep this only on the, uh, the straps here. And there we go. And continues up here just a tiny bit. All right. We'll get these. Actually, I'll just go ahead and hit the saddle real quick. The saddle is a very smooth surface, so our contrast paint may not look perfect. But that's okay, because the rider will be sitting on the saddle and blocking most of it. So. I am still going to try to get a relatively smooth coat, but on perfectly smooth things like this, like the skin is technically a smooth surface but it has so much inlaid texture that we don't really get the the pools of contrast forming that cause the like tide marks or splotchy looking pattern because it flows into all the little cracks and so it doesn't have time to pool up 
But on this, because it's just smooth, we do get some of that. And if this was not the saddle, like say he just had a piece of leather armor on or something, and it wasn't going to be mostly covered, I would use a non-contrast paint, most likely. saddle here. Good. Alright, so then we just have to do the straps, the rest of these straps here, and we'll be good to go. So I'll uh, finish these up, and then figure out what the next color is going to be. I know there's... we're going to do more to the dragon itself, the skin. I just don't know what exactly... Uh, the box art has them with like a sort of cream color under their wings. And we might do that. But we might do something else. In any event, once this leather is done and I've thought about it, we'll come back and do whatever that step is. Alright, and we're back. And now we're going to use some... I'm not actually sure yet. Either Morgast Bone or Flayed One Flesh. We're going to start with Flayed One Flesh, but we might move to more Gas Bone. And this is going to be on the under parts. So, under the tail here. Uh, probably under the wings in a second. I'm going to start with the under the tail here and just see what it looks like. We'll definitely need a couple coats of this, I assume. Especially if we stick with this one and don't go to the Morgas bone. Just being careful just to paint up to the edges of these of these scales here. I don't want to paint uh, onto the scales or onto this blue line, nice definition line we have here. So I'm just going slow, making sure to only paint up to those. A little bit too much water left on my paintbrush there. But like I said, we'll need a couple uh, a couple coats of this. I just want to see what the color looks like with this uh, with this blue. Almost here. Alright, so I'm just going to let that dry, and obviously if we're going to keep this, we'll need at least one, maybe two more coats, but I think I like how it looks. So what we're going to try also is, I'm going to get a piece of foam here, and this is just uh, this is just pluck foam from like a, one of those pluck foam carrying cases for your army. And I'm just going to round round off the end a little bit. I'm just pulling off pulling off the corners, giving me sort of a, a round-ish nub there at the end. And then I'm going to dip this in the paint. Then just push it down. Here, actually, I can show you what I'm doing here. Here, I'll show you on this note card. So I'm dipping it in the paint here. And then I'm just going straight down like this to get it worked into the whole tip that I made there and to make sure that there's not too much paint on the end because I don't want globs of it and then we're going to come here this guy's a pain in the butt to hold on to and we're just in the in between the wings here we're just going to tap just going to tap and we want to just build this color up in the middle here and then we'll get some more, and tap it off here, and come back in, and just keep tapping. And we can go as close or as far away from the edge as we want, but basically this is, this is a technique that I've used to sort of blend when I'm bad at blending. <laughs> um, 
the sponge sort of works as a little bit of a blend a blender on its own because it puts little dots of paint farther out than where you're actually pushing so like if I'm pushing down right in the center of this the outside edges are hitting out there and so then you get this nice sort of fade from white to blue and you didn't have to try that hard and I'm all about getting cool looking techniques without trying that hard because when I try too hard it just doesn't work out I just don't get the uh, I don't get the results I'm talking about or I, that I want so I've been painting for a long time and uh, I think I'm pretty decent at it but there are still some techniques that elude me so so we're just gonna do this up and down here just trying to keep it off that that line between the wings just gonna keep doing this blending it blending it out making sure that it's solid in the middle and it might even be the case that we have to come back and paint with the brush a little bit in the middle of our white here but we'll see but yeah so I'm just gonna do this on these two and this bit and then on the other wing and then I'll finish up the bottom of the dragon there I don't I think I will actually put it up here as well the same color on that part I'm not gonna mess around with putting it down here though there's just a lot going on like scale and skin and armor and no one's gonna be looking down there to see if you carried your white all the way through the dragon so you know to heck with it so yeah I'll just finish up these wings put the white on the rest of the body where it needs to be and then we'll come back and do the next step all right we're back and we have done the wing the other wing the under the tail here and up there by the head um these still need maybe one more coat but i'll do that in between another step while i'm waiting for something to dry or something for now we're going to go on to that more gas bone that we were going to use and we're going to use this on the claws and the teeth uh in the wing spikes actually wing spikes as well so i'll start with those wing spikes why not let's see if the other wing can get out of the frame here so these wing spikes Um, I heard a funny story about wing spikes from the the Lord of the Rings behind the scenes footage. Um, one of the artists was mentioning to John Howe, who is one of the conceptual designers for Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, actually. Um, well, I think he worked on The Hobbit. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, definitely Lord of the Rings. And he was making fun of him that uh he put john howe put nazgul wing spikes and this artist was making fun of him that well in real life you know wing spikes wouldn't make any sense the wings wouldn't fold up properly and john howe basically told him to shove it they look cool and that's all that matters and i'm of the same opinion wing spikes may make no sense but they look cool and maybe a dragon has different wing folding mechanics than uh, than birds. Maybe a Nazgul can fold its wings however it wants. What about that artist whose name I've forgotten? So I'm just getting the claws here. And we gotta do the claws on the feet as well. And we gotta do the wing spikes on the other wing. But now first I'm gonna grab the teeth. bunch of little teeth in here a couple bigger ones and then when you're doing this you just want to make sure to get the back side of the other teeth and then obviously do the same thing on the other side spin this around and um, if you're curious this guy's base does fit in the extra large uh, paint handle this thing right here 
uh, fits like that, and I think it actually fits like this, too. Uh, the problem is I can't get him in frame properly <laughs> with this on there. That's why I'm just holding him by the base. So, if you're curious why that is, there's your answer. Alright, so I'm just going to do this other wing here. Uh, get these front claws. Let that dry. Make sure I haven't missed anything else that needs to be more gas bone. And then we'll come back, and I think it'll be time to do the gold armor. Alright, we're back with the claws all done now. We're going to move on to Retributor Armor, the classic gold of the Stormcast Eternals. And this is just going to be anything that's armor on this guy. Um, any trim on the armor is going to be silver. So I'm not going to worry about that right this second. But... All the main armor plates are going to be gold. So it should just be that. And then... So this is kind of confusing. I think... I'm going to dry my paintbrush off here real quick. I think these three are armor plates. That is part of his body. And this is part of his body. It's kind of confusing. But I think it's just these three plates after the saddle. So... That's what we're going to do for now. Uh, I could go look at the, the box art. I don't really feel like doing that right now. So we're just going to rock with these three. And if it's not right, well, it's my paint job. I can do what I want. So I'm just going to get all the details on the saddle as well. Get these things right here. I was going to do them in brown originally, but if you notice, I only painted the one because I decided they're going to be gold. We got to get the back of his saddle thing here. I don't know what the back of this, I don't know what this part of the saddle is called. It's like the, the saddle horn, but in the back. I don't know. We won't worry about that. Uh, and then the other part that's on here is his, wing, or his horn tips. And his horn tips are kind of weird. They look like they have, or his horns rather, they look like they have scales on them. So I'm leaving them blue. Normally I would do them in bone, but they kind of look like a continuation of his skin. So I'm wondering if these are supposed to be ears, not uh, not horns. I don't know. They're going to stay blue for now, though, so they can be ears, I guess. Um, and then, of course, we got to get the, the armor panel under him. Make sure to get right up to the line, but not go over it. Just like that. And all the belt buckles and stuff are going to be silver as well, so we won't worry about them in gold. Just make sure to get the top of this right here. Being careful not to touch the cream color. And then we want to get the side as well. When we ink uh, the gold, we'll probably fill that in, but better to be safe than sorry. Fill all this in. Some of this crest here of Sigmar slash Grungi slash who knows um, is going to be silver, but for right now, we're just going to paint it gold. Make sure, because these armor panels are dimensional, uh, just always want to make sure you get the side of them, or the top, or whatever, the edge, basically. You don't want your primer showing through. And this is uh, this miniature is primed in Wraithbone, by the way. Uh, sometimes I forget to say that in the beginning, and I don't remember if I did or not, so Wraithbone. Just keep this last little edge up there. Alright, so yeah, I'm just going to 
continue getting this gold on. Uh, because it's applying over Wraithbone in a couple spots, we're going to need a second coat. So I'll just do that after this first coat dries. And then he'll be almost done. We'll just have to do the eyes, maybe a couple more details on the skin, the silver. And then he'll be done and we'll be ready to move on to the rider. All right, we're back and our gold is all finished up. And now it's time to move on to the silver. And for this, uh, I'm going to use a Scale 75 paint, a uh, Scale 75 Cobalt Alchemy. The camera will focus on it. There we go. Uh, but I will say, um, if you are like I have been for most of my painting career and you only want to use Games Workshop paint, uh, this is almost identical to Grey Knight Steel. I just happened to run out of Grey Knight Steel, so I grabbed this. So if you want to stick to that, it would not be a problem. I think this Cobalt Alchemy is slightly more blue than Grey Knight Steel, but once we put the Null Noil over it, it comes out to almost exactly the same color. So, so I'm just going to put this on all the trim here. So all the bits of the armor that we didn't already paint. Um, and this over any gold that we splashed over the edge there or over this Wraithbone Primer will not cover the greatest, so we will use two coats here to make sure we have a nice smooth coat of silver. But like I said, this is all the trim of the armor, um, as well as all the belt buckles and stuff like that. And then we have to decide which parts of this inner seal is going to be silver. And I think I'm actually going to do the whole thing in silver, now that I look at it. Yeah, I'm just going to do the whole face and all the points and stuff. The whole thing in silver. I think that'll look pretty cool. And if it doesn't, yeah, it's facing down on the dragon. The rider of the dragon's going to have a flaming sword, so... No one will be looking at that anyway, it's fine. Uh, here's another opportunity to get the side of this here, because it does have some dimensionality, so... It will look a little funky if we don't paint the side of it. There we go. Alright, what else needs silvering? Oh, we got some more trim right here. Making sure not to get it on the blue, of course. Although this on the blue would be far less noticeable than the gold, so. Alright. We'll do that side in a second. Well, like we'll just do this now. And then we'll get the belt buckles. And for the belt buckles, I will need a smaller brush. So as soon as I do this, I will grab one. There we go, rinse this off, and belt buckle time. So, just gonna grab this small brush here, and then just very gently and carefully line the belt buckle. Just like that. So, I'll do that on the rest of them, uh, and then I'll do a second coat of paint on other places of silver that, like right here where it's not quite covering, you can see there. We'll do that. Grab the trim up there that I definitely didn't forget until this very second. And then we'll come back and see what we have to do next. All right, everything is nice and dry. And now we're gonna move on to a color which I'm gonna do an experiment with. This whole figure is kind of an experiment. We're just gonna see how it goes. I'm going to move on to Skeleton Horde, and I'm going to put this all over the cream that we did earlier. And the experiment part is I'm going to put it in these wing flaps here. I'm going to put it over the whole wing flap, and we're just going to see how it goes. So it's going to be over the blue and over the cream. And yeah, we're just going to see what it looks like. Um, if it looks... 
it looks good, if it doesn't look good, it's kind of too late now, we're committed. But I think it's going to look good. I think it'll look passable at the very least. This isn't a commission, this is just part of my personal army, so I'm not super worried. If it doesn't look so good, eh, whatever. But so far, it seems to be looking pretty fine. So we'll continue on. I'm putting this on pretty light, um, as you can see. Uh, a lot of my contrast I put on very thick because I don't want uh, I don't want tide line, tide marks or splotchy lines or anything like that. But for this, I just kind of want to tint the surface. I don't want to completely just drown it in color. So I am putting it on a little thinner. Um, and I'm trying to keep it off the dividing like spines here as much as possible. So I kind of want them to stay the sort of true blue of the dragon skin. All right, and the last one here. All right, and then we're also going to put it on the underbelly. I think that's the only places we put the cream. Oh, I guess on his like on his neck, which is just an extension of his underbelly, really. But there you go. I think that uh, I think that looks better th now than it did. I still I thought that looked pretty good, but I think this looks better. So we're gonna put it now in here, and then also on under his tail. Uh, and in here, I'm being careful not to get it on the silver and the blue, but on the other stuff, it'll just sit on there and won't change the color of the brown or the gold hardly at all so that's fine so yeah i'm gonna finish this up uh do the other wing just like we did the first wing do under the tail and then we'll come back and do the next step all right and we're back and i did the wings and under the tail his neck i also decided to do the flaps of these wings as well just to give them a little color variation um, and I'm going to point out a mistake I made that is not worth the time for me to fix now but something to keep in mind you see these dots right here and right here this is from when I was painting either this or the other wing and I was flicking my paintbrush and it was like going along an edge like this and flicking the bristles and it caused little droplets to come over here and dry before I had done this one so Try to avoid that if you can. Um, there'll be some dots here now. I'm not going to go back and fix them. I'd have to repaint this area with the primer color, Wraithbone, and then recontrast it. And it's not worth it to me. I'll have to paint like six or seven of these guys for my army eventually. So, eh, whatever. Not worried about it. But just something to keep in mind when you're using contrast paint. But now, we're going to move on to Leviathan Blue. And this is going to be for the inside of his mouth, as well as his eyes. So I'm just going to be careful not to hit the teeth if I can. And I'm going to get the tongue with this color as well. I might get the inside of the teeth, but that's okay. As long as the outside of the teeth are the same color, we'll be all good. And we might have to repaint a couple teeth, we'll see. I should have done this before the teeth, but... I was not thinking. Yeah, we'll have to repaint a couple of the teeth there. That's okay. So now I'm going to switch to my smaller brush. And we're going to put this in the eye sockets here. Maybe. There we go. And the other one. Wonderful. We're going to come back and dot that with a brighter color later, but for now, that'll work just fine. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to repaint the teeth real quick. Uh, and then we'll come back, and I think we'll be time to do the Null Oil. Alright, we're back. And as I said, we're moving on to the Null Oil now. We've got to be very careful with this because we don't want to have that flake or flecking that I talked about earlier. So, 
just going to put this on all the silver, all the gold, um, and then in a couple, a couple key recesses just to, uh, just to darken things up a little bit. But first, we'll do the easy stuff, which is just all over the gold and all over the silver. Make sure we get it down into the recesses here. And we're going to go into the recess here along where the metal meets the blue. Make sure it fills in that recess nicely. How many times can I say recess in one clip? Good grief. Get it down in there. There. And I'm just going to run it all the way down the leather straps here. Get in here, fill those cracks in nicely. And in there as well. And then on the other side, let's see if we can get a little closer to the camera this time. Just filling that in. Filling these in. This null oil step can also be a time if you see a spot that should have been painted and you left it a primer in a corner, you can just fill in with some null oil. The uh, professionals, I'm sure, would go back and repaint it, but as always here, we're looking for tabletop quality and speed. anyone wants to zoom in on your belt buckles and tell you that your belt buckles weren't properly painted then they have too much time on their hands and I don't want to associate with them anyway so just getting this all right I think that's all of the armor in the recesses on him or on his chest now we're gonna do his head And his horn slash wing or horn slash ear tips yet to be determined if they're ears or horns. Again, be careful of the flicking little dots like I talked about earlier. This would be a null oil is one of the grand offenders when it comes to that. Those little tiny black dots will get everywhere. Alright. So now, like I said, I'm going to go in and do some of the key recesses. So I'm going to get in his nose here. Along his face. And this is sort of just personal preference. Where you want to draw a little more interest. Or a little more exaggeration. So I'm going to do here under the wing. And here under the wing down through there through that muscle group and I'll do the same thing on the other side and when I'm doing things like this on a symmetrical model I always like to do both I like to do one flip it and do the other side instead of going just around to different things I forgot I'm also going to do his claws in this so I'll do that real quick I'll do the other claws after I pause the video but just getting those done so we're just going to look for a couple more key recesses here one is going to be I think no I was going to differentiate actually I am I think right in here just this line of uh, scales that's the word I could not think of the word differentiate them not all the way down but a little ways down a little farther right to about there I think that's good and then where else do we want I think we want right here between the dark and the light skin 
want a little bit of a line there. Same thing on this side. Good. And do we want that going down the tail? I think we might. So just gently and carefully, we're going to fill this line in here. Being very careful not to run too much of the null oil over either the blue or the cream. Just go all the way down here. There we go. Oh, that was off camera, but there, you can see the difference there. There's the, the blue and the cream not separated, and there's the black line. So I'll do that on the other side. I'm just going to see if there's anywhere else where I want to make this distinction, though. And I think... I think I'm going to do it right here along his arms. Just like this. And down there. And then up through here just like that and I'll do it on the other side but yeah that's all we're doing just picking out a couple spots where you think there should be more definition and adding that definition so I'll finish this up let this dry and I think that will be him done and so we'll come back and start on the rider All right, and we're back, and it's time to work on the leader. And I had the leader just glued to an old paintbrush here to paint him, because I didn't really know how else to hold on to him. So here we are. So I'm going to start with the Retributor armor, and I'm just going to do that all over his armor. I do my Stormcast armor pretty simple. Uh, usually I prime him prime them with uh, Retributor armor, but I ran out, and I kind of forgot that this was Dragon Weekend, so here we are. But that's okay, I'll just brush it on, and it won't be a problem. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this, nothing really too, uh, too fancy about this, just brushing on the gold, I'm basically brushing it on the entirety of the miniature. Uh, I'm not like stirrups and stuff right here. I'm not trying to get perfect coverage because I'm obviously going to repaint the stirrups a different color. But everywhere else, I'm just making sure to get full coverage. If I notice any spots that are not covered very well, I'll come back and repaint them. But yeah, I'll uh, finish up this base coat, put in a second coat wherever I need to, let it dry. And we'll come back and probably do the silver. Alright, we're back and the gold is dry. And we're actually not going to go to the silver yet. We're going to go to the Mornfang Brown first for all the leather. We're doing this first because I realized I have to paint the silver belt buckles over the top of this color. So we're going to start here. So this is just going to be his belt across his waist. Uh, his... Uh, I've forgotten the word. Place you put stirrups. It's going to be the same his stirrup color. This little pouch on his belt will be this color as well. And then I think the only other thing that's this color are the straps holding his shield to his arm. So just a couple quick things, but because I have to paint the silver belt buckles, it's easier to do this color first. Okay. And then the straps here. There we go. And then stirrups. Oh, and he's got got little tiny straps on each leg here and he probably has them on his wrists too yep right here Those. actually I can do the 
wrapping on the sword here as well. There we go, and then, oh, stirrups, right, stirrups. Just come down here. Make sure to get all sides of the stirrup here. It actually comes off the foot a little bit more than I thought it does, so you gotta go all the way around. And then the back. Alright, so I'll do the other stirrup the exact same way I did this one. Then I'll let this dry completely. We'll come back, and I think for real this time, we'll do the silver. Alright, we're back. Our brown is all dry, and we're going back to this Scale 75 Cobalt Alchemy, if the camera decides to focus. There we go. Cobalt Alchemy, and again, if you missed me saying it before, uh, you can use Grey Knight Steel here if you want to stick to GW. Um, I just ran out of Grey Knight Steel, and I happen to have this Cobalt Alchemy on hand, so I'm using this. They are almost identical in their colors. And I've used Grey Knight Steel actually on most of my Stormcast stuff, but because I'm out, I have to use this. So the silver is just going on all the trim basically on this guy. Anywhere that it might exist. Up here. We'll grab this belt buckle that we delayed painting earlier. Grab that. And the chainmail here is going to be this color as well. Most of this won't end up being seen once he's on the dragon, but just gonna paint it just in case all right and I'm gonna paint the blade of the sword here in this color I'm gonna do my uh... normally I would do flame using contrast paint and I'd make it a I'd go from like a bright yellow all the way to a red but in this case I really want to contrast with the blue of the dragon so I'm going to do a very, very orange flame. And so I'm going to do that with a bit of layer paint instead. Alright, so now I'm going to paint all this detail on this shield here. So that'll be this crest in the middle, which I refer to as the Sigmar slash... Grungy. So I'm not honestly sure which one it's supposed to be. I assume it's Sigmar, but with the uh, with the dwarf helping build this armor, you never know. Just make sure to get all these lightning bolts here. Go. And then we're going to do the rim of the shield in this color as well. Go around there. And make sure to get the actual rim itself here. And so yeah, I'll finish this up. I'll let that dry. And we'll come back and put on the army colors of my Stormcast army. All right, and we're back. I'm going to do two colors at once in this step. We're going to use Sotek Green and Mephiston Red. So I'm going to start with the Mephiston Red, and this is going to be for his cape, or his cloak, or however you wish to refer to it as. I honestly don't know the difference, so... I'm happy to call it his cape. I'm 
My fist in red is almost empty. I'm gonna have to get a a new pot of it soon. Oof. Got a little bit of red on the sword there. That is the one problem with uh, gluing this guy to a, a paintbrush is that when you're holding him, so he can twist around there, and that's exactly what just happened, and I got some red on the sword, but that's okay. It wiped off fine. So this uh, Mephiston Red will probably need a second coat over this uh, Wraithbone, but maybe not. We'll see. I am going to put some Null Oil on this. I'm basically going to drown this guy in Null Oil once he's all dry. <laughs> Which I know some people don't approve of, or don't like, but that's just how I'm painting this Stormcast army. Going for solid tabletop quality. And so, that's what I'm doing. I've already done it on about 3,000 points of the army now, so I'm not going to stop. Alright, and then we're going to get the underside of the cape here. there. Okay. This last bit of paint in this pot is uh, just starting to slightly dry up. You can feel it. It feels much too dry on the brush, but we still got a smooth coat. That's all that we're after. Rinse the brush off, and I realized that I should have actually done another color before the silver, but I forgot we should have done the Sotek green, because the trim on that shoulder pad is going to have to be painted afterwards now, but yeah, whatever. So we're going to go to the Sotek green, and we're going to paint this shoulder pad here. Careful not to get it on the other colors. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to put it on the shoulder pad. We're also going to put it on the plume here on his head. Probably need a second coat of that. Probably a second coat of the Mephiston Red. Then we'll come back and do the flame and then some Null Oil and we'll be done. Alright, we're back, and it's time to move on to the flame. So for that, we're going to start off with Fire Dragon Bright. This is going to be a three-step process. This, and then a yellow, and then a yellow wash. I'm just going to kind of guess where the flame starts on the sword here. Doesn't have to be perfect. go. And it also doesn't have to be, uh, we don't have to cover completely over the silver. We can just go to town as is. I am going to put a little more over here after just saying we didn't need to cover over it completely, but that's okay. So then, let's go straight into the next color here, which is going to be Uriel Yellow. And we're just going to take this and go across the strands of fire like this, create some differences in color. And then we'll come back and put the wash on it. we got to let this dry completely before we do that. So once that's dry, we'll be back. All right, we're back, and we're going to move on to Cassandora Yellow now. This is going onto the flame of the sword here. This just brings the yellow and the orange together a little bit more. 
And if it runs onto the silver a little bit, that's fine. It'll just give us a tiny, tiny amount of object source lighting. All right, and there we go. He's all set. So now it's time for the controversial step of drowning him in null oil. So there's the null oil. Now for the drown. So we're just going to take this and apply it all over him. Um, and hopefully we'll end up with something like this. As you can see, they've got he's got a ways to go to get to that. So here we go. Start on the shield here. It won't get exactly to that because that was sprayed uh, retributor armor and this is brush on. They are slightly different. But at least we should get closer to that model I just showed you. And we are drowning him in it because we're putting it all over him. But we're still making sure to not let it pool too much in any one spot. We want it in the recesses, not all over the flat surfaces. sure to get the entirety of each limb or area before I move on to somewhere else just because I don't want to leave tied lines, tied marks where this stuff has started to dry. So we're doing full sections at once here. Careful not to blend with that yellow that we just applied. Other side of the arm. There we go. Head and other shoulder pad. And I'll do the cape last. The cape can be some of the trickiest bits to get because there's large recesses and big flat curves that can hold on to the null oil in ways that you don't want. Just make sure we get this all over the shield. There we go. Down in there. Wonderful. Oh, we got some leaking yellow here. Wipe that off. That side looks fine. All right, now onto the cape. We've got this scale pattern up here, which will take the null oil very well. That's good. So I'm just gonna do this, and there's a little too much in there, so we'll pull some of that back out, and then go on the bottom. Pull it down like that, and like this. Alrighty. All right, and I think. That should just about do it. So we'll let this dry, obviously, before we put him on the dragon. But now you should hopefully be seeing some pictures of him all done and on his base and all that. Hopefully you are. So hopefully I let him dry and then did all that. But uh, yeah, thank you everybody for watching. Um, hopefully... I will take my last final in a couple days, and then I will be off for a couple weeks before next semester. And so I'm hopefully going to stream, maybe in a couple parts, the uh, the big dragon, uh, whatever his name is, Karazine or something, I can't remember. Whatever the big dragon's name is, we'll hopefully be streaming him. Obviously, if you're watching this, like, on the day I'm releasing this, that's what I mean. If you're watching it six years in the future, don't expect a stream of the dragon anytime soon because it already happened. But, again, thank you everybody for watching and I will see you next time.